Welcome back to another YouTube video and as requested I am doing a technical SEO video on actually how to conduct a technical SEO audit on your website. You will need two tools for this if you're going to be following along. You're going to need Screaming Frog and you also need Google Sheets as well which I believe a lot of you guys will probably have. Screaming Frog you can also get the, the free version as well. Now part of our agency process is month one we like to do a technical SEO audit and fix any changes. Changes. Um, sometimes it can take a long period of time. Sometimes it can be a little bit less. It depends on how how old the website is, when the last technical SEO audit was done, etc. If you're looking to grow your organic SEO, make certain to check out the Traffic Accelerator system. The link is in the description. It is completely free. You will get a complete audit for your website and you can essentially see where you are lacking and where you should be focusing your time and efforts on as well. There are a couple case studies on the actual page as well, so make certain to check that out. The link is in the description. Now, back to the video. So, if we just search up Lawyers in Manchester, um, I have just randomly plucked a website. Uh, it was WTB Solicitors. The reason why I picked this website is it's on page two at the minute um, for uh, Lawyers in Manchester. So, I thought it would be a brilliant opportunity. Now, I have took uh, or sorry i have done a screaming frog audit here now without you guys freaking out and thinking what is this um it looks ugly i know it's very very simple to actually do uh, an audit right so up here you actually have the url which i've just copied the home page url of the website and i've just hit start now the crawling process will depend on how big the website is if it is let's say a couple hundred pages it might take five minutes or so this this audit literally took me about four or five minutes um, and as you can see here it does say the total number of pages as well so in total we have got uh, 294 pages if i select all here we actually have 792 um, this is basically you can filter out what type of pages you want to look at so if your website has a lot of pdfs for example like this website only has two pdfs you can obviously see uh, where all the pdfs are you can filter through your images you can filter through css files javascript files etc now what i typically like to do when i am essentially doing an audit is there's a few things that i like to take a look at right so first of all i want to export all of my html pages so very quickly i'm going to set up a sheet i'm going to pause the video for one second and we'll go over all the steps so this is my sheet here i've just named it tech seo so basically what i'm going to be doing is i am going to be doing an export of all of our pages so if i click on export here we'll call this lawyers manchester you can name this any anything that you want really then i'm going to click save then all we're going to do is we're just going to upload the actual file to our sheet here this again it will depend on how big your website is and we are rocking and rolling now there's a few areas that i want to essentially look at so if we where to just highlight this top row now the columns on screaming frog you can actually move these around so for example unique in links is the amount of internal links a page actually has going through to it so for example the more important a page is you are going to want more internal links going through to that page so for example if we have a page on domestic uh, violence and protection of children that only has two unique end links which tells me straight off the bat that some of these pages are going to need a lot more uh, unique end links so obviously you can filter some of these um, by the amount of end links that they have so if i was to filter some of these so actually taking a look at some of these pages these we've got two orphan pages which means that they don't have any internal links which makes it very hard for google to crawl those pages right so the site accessibility page um it doesn't have any internal links to it um then it looks like they also have a lot of lawyers that actually work for them so for example jillian exley she i believe works at this page or actually it's a 404 page so again that's something even worse right so what i would be looking to do is anything with less than let's say 15 or 20 internal links i would probably be looking to build some more internal links to it now this the the 15 or 20 
does depend on the size of the website. If it is a bigger website, it might need more internal links. If it's a smaller website, it might need a little bit less than 15 or 20. But again, I would be prioritizing some of these pages depending on what they are. So if it is a service page, for example, and I really care about ranking that service page, I would build more internal links to it. So such as this page here, if we take a look, so this is all talking about the protection of children, domestic abuse, etc. So this page would probably get a lot of searches. However, if we actually take a look at the amount of um, internal links, it only has two. So this would be something that I would be looking to improve upon. Um, now, obviously, you can set up filters. So what you might want to do is, let's say, if we do conditional formatting and if we say red, highlight anything in red that is less than, let's say, 10 internal links. So this is going to essentially highlight any pages that have less than 10 internal links going through to it. So. For example, this page, I would probably be looking to improve that because it is a service page. Now, obviously, we do have case study and case study two as well. So once you start looking at the URLs, you can very quickly start seeing that there are issues. Um, so for example, they've got two case study pages and this is talking about tenants suffering from rising dampness uh, in house. Now, the issue that you actually have here is that you've named it case study and case study two in the URL. So what I would be looking to do is obviously build more internal links to some of these pages, but then also potentially look to change the URL so it matches what the um, what the case study is about. So for example, Christian Cover granted asylum in UK, you could actually have that as, as the URL and then, and then hyphen case study after. Same goes with this, tenant suffering from rising dampness in, in her house, then you could have a case study after that. So there's just all of these things that you start seeing um, when you're looking at it from a top level point of view. Now, if we actually load up Screw and Frog again, there are a few columns that I um, like to take a look at, right? So status code, obviously, um, we've got two pages here, which are 404ing. Now, what you can actually do is say, if you have a page that is 404ing, like the, the site accessibility, what you can then do is go into your in links down here and it'll tell you where the actual um, URL is coming from. So if we actually take a look at some of the status codes, what I've done is I've just sorted it by 404 up top. Now, basically there are quite a lot of 404 pages. Now, what I would be looking to do here is if you highlight, for example, one of these pages, it actually tells you where the internal link's coming from, right? So if we take a look here, as you can see here, it says from, and then to. now if we just open this page up, open from in browser. And if we go back to our screen frog, it also shows the anchor text here, right? So as you can see, um, Facebook allowed their users in the United States. That's the actual um, anchor. And if we take a look, if we click this link, that is actually a 404 page or it should be a 404 page. As you can see here, 404. Now, what I would be looking to do is I would essentially look to export all of these 404 pages, which you can easily do by just clicking and dragging all of these. And you can just export and we'll again, we'll just export it as uh, 404 errors. Save. And then we also have some double 301s as well. Now, the double 301s is quite a weird one because sometimes it looks like the page is actually working, but it's actually not. So if we take a look here, right, if we paste this and then go and look at the anchor text here, as you can see, anchor text, I have left my partner, right? Um, now, if we just paste that in here, where is the anchor? Do, 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 do. I think I'm on the wrong page and then search this. So if we take a look here, this should go to forward slash help to sort out your life. That's just in the bottom left corner. Um, but it actually redirects or it double re redirects to forward slash services, forward slash domestic violence, forward slash help to sort out your life. So it's just it's, um, linking to the wrong page. 
Now it's just simple fixes like this that we can that we can sort out. Now again, what I would be looking to do here is all of our double three oh ones, just uh, highlight them all and then just export them. We'll do these as double three oh one, and very quickly we're starting to build out our technical SEO audit. Now, what I would be looking to do here is adding a new tab. And again, we can just import the files here. So if we do the 404s, just upload these. And what you actually want to do now is append to current uh, sheet and then import the data. Pending to the current sheet will basically mean that it's not gonna create a new sheet every time. So then what we want to do is create a third tab as well and click on file import upload and upload our double 301 issues as well and then click on append to current sheet import data so now we've got three tabs in total we have tab number one which is our overall website we have got our 404s we have got our double 301s and one other thing that i also like to take a look at as well is the images so for example, every website has probably done this at some point and they've uploaded images that are just way too big. So as you can see here, we have got quite a few images that sh can be optimized and I'll show you how you can optimize your images as well. So if we take a look at the biggest image here, which is 9.6 megabytes. Now, a lot of images, they should probably should be about a couple hundred kilobytes. If we paste that in here. This is the image. Now, there's obviously plugins that you can obviously use on your website, or you can also do this manually. So you can save the image and you can you can go over to Google and search on image. Uh, there, there's a few of these. Tiny PNG is a good one. Image compressor, I've, I've, it looks like I've already used it. You can just download this and just upload it to our site here and basically it's just going to compress the image so if i just save the image here and upload it so as you can see i've uploaded the image it's 9.6 megabytes to start with and it's going to start compressing and it's probably going to go down to a couple hundred kilobytes um you can also select the the quality that you want it i would probably do somewhere in between and we can see that it is down to 447 kil kilobytes i'm happy with that we can then download our image so we've reduced the image size by 9.6 or sorry 96 percent which is super good what you can also do as well is you can export all of your images to the google sheets and start to optimize your images now in total you would probably have three or four different tabs down here so you might have one that is solely focusing on the internal links so building more internal relevant links to your more important pages your 404 uh, errors your 301 errors and also your images as well now there are other things that you can definitely look at so for example if we take a look at screaming frog again we can obviously take a look at alt text as well. So images that don't have alt text. If we take a look here on the right hand side. So we've got four sections here over 100 kilobytes images missing alt text. So we actually do have 100 images that don't have any alt text. Now, if you're trying to rank images, that is a very, very important, uh, crucial part to essentially ranking your images, having the alt text. Uh, filled for all of the images and then we also have missing alt at as well so if you're trying to optimize your website for mobile um for a faster mobile experience having that because when google essentially crawls the the page it can see that the, that the image should be displayed at certain heights and um, dimensions and stuff now there are quite a lot of different things that we can take a look at. So Screaming Frog, although it looks very, very ugly, um, it's not that hard to understand once you essentially start digging down into it. Um, but obviously you do have at the top all of the different categories. So if you want to take a look at page titles, for example, you can do. Um, if you want to take a look at meta descriptions and fill in um, empty meta descriptions, you can. Meta keywords, H1s. Some websites, for example, have duplicate H1s. 
So as we can see here, um, we have got duplicate H1s. And if you know H1s is probably the, one of the most important things um, from an on-page SEO point of view on the actual page. So you definitely don't want loads of duplicate H1s, which these guys do actually have. So this, is, this would be another thing that I would be exporting and getting the team to fix. Um, so yeah, there are a lot of different things. Another thing that we can also take a look at is the word count of pages. So if you actually go to the content at the top, you can sort by lowest to highest word count and any pages that I would think would uh, basically needs more words on the page by looking at the competitors would be some of the pages that we would want to attack first. So if there are any service pages, for example, the housing law page only has 397 uh, words. Now, what I would be looking to do there is look at your competitor and see how many words they have for housing law. Typically speaking, your service pages probably need a little bit more than than 397. Um, so that is another thing to take a look at. Now, I could probably do a one hour session on Screaming Frog because the way that you audit a website for local businesses is a lot different to how you would audit a website for an e-commerce brand, for example. So there are a lot of different um, variants to this. Um, and also you all, you do have international SEO as well. So you'd basically be looking at HR, href, lang tags, etc. So that's been my video on technical SEO audits and also looking into Screaming Frog. As I mentioned before, I could probably do a one hour video just talking about Screaming Frog and all the different types of websites you can actually run an audit through it. If you guys do want me to do a part two to this potentially, let me know down in the comments. And if you guys want a free 15 minute growth strategy call for your website, make sure to check out casualdash.com. Thanks.